Good morning, everyone. We would like to welcome world number one and FedEx Cup leader Scotty Shuffler to the Media Center. Scotty, welcome, making your fourth start here. I want to start off with some opening comments, what it is like to be back with the week off. Yeah, it's uh, good to be back. I got some good rest at home last week. We had pretty bad weather in Dallas, um, so it wasn't wasn't too great for golf, so I'm feeling pretty rested. Um, came out, hit some putts yesterday afternoon, and um, greens are in great shape, and yeah, I'll go out and play, play a few today and see how, the, see how the course is playing. And where we saw you last year coming off a runner up uh, from Texas, how's your game feeling, and what were you doing with the week off? Yeah, feeling good. Um, yeah, with the week off, definitely got a lot of rest. Um, you know, I tried to go out and play a few times, but it was just raining so much that the courses were, we were getting pulled off for lightning, and they were, you know, obviously really wet. Um, so I didn't really get a ton done last week, but I was able to get out and practice and play on the weekend. Um, but yeah, feeling rested, got some, got some good time at home, you know, hanging out with Marin Bennett, and uh, yeah, it was a fun week. As we get the microphone over to you, just want to ask how your sleep schedule is with newborn. <laughs> Every night's different. Um, I think he, he's been doing pretty good. Um, you know, Mayor's been pretty nice at night. You know, I can't can't really do too much outside of changing a diaper. So um, and burping him occasionally, but outside of that, I can't really do too much at night. So, um, but yeah, it's been fun. But getting a little bit of sleep, not not too much. A little bit of questions. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get a mic over to you. We'll start off uh, with Dan. When did you find out that the charges would be dropped, and was it a relief, or had you kind of already moved past it? Man, I thought you were going to ask about golf. No, you didn't. <laughs> um, when did I find out the charges were going to be dropped? I had a good idea at the uh, the end of the week at Colonial that they were going to be dropped. Um, obviously, we had a lot of evidence on our side. Um, you know, we needed to let the the legal process play out at that point. But um, towards the end of the week at Colonial, um, I think my lawyer used the term like it went from like a one foot putt to it's on the lip kind of thing. And then, you know, nothing's obviously official until it becomes really official. But I think Friday afternoon it was it was pretty official in our mind. They just needed to meet with the judge to go over details and stuff like that. And then um, but yeah, I'd say receive news towards the end of the week. And then was it was it a relief or had you kind of already moved past it? I mean, no, I definitely hadn't moved past it. And, you know, I would say that I still, you know, wouldn't have 100% moved past it because, yeah, the charges are dropped, but I still now it's almost more appropriate for people to ask me about it and ask me about the situation. And to be honest with you, it's not something that I love reliving just because it was fairly traumatic for me being arrested going into the golf course. And so um, – it's not something that I love talking about, and it's something that I'm hoping to move past. But when the charges are dropped, that's kind of only the beginning of kind of getting past it, if that makes sense. Um, so kind of, you know, operating through that now. And um, it was definitely a bit of a relief, but not not total relief, because that's something that will always, I think, you know, kind of stick with me. You know, that mugshot, I'm sure, is not going anywhere anytime soon. Um. <laughs> and we'll go over to Dave Shalosky, the number to run. Yes, Scotty, was there, was there consideration for from you and the legal team to seek uh, uh, your own case against the Louisville Police Department, a, a, a lawsuit or, or what happened? For me personally, no. That was something that if we needed to use it, I think Steve was more than ready to use that just because, like I said, there was a, a ton of evidence in our favor. Um, you know, there was eyewitnesses on the scene that corroborated my story and, um, the video evidence, the police officer talking to me after, all the evidence pointed to exactly what my side of the story was. And um, so if we needed to, if it, if I kind of became like, I don't really know how to describe it, but basically if I had to show up in court, I think Steve was more than prepared to, uh, to pursue legal action. But at the end of the day, you know, I did not want to have to pursue legal action against Louisville because at the end of the day that – the people of Louisville are then going to have to pay for the mistakes of their police department. That just doesn't seem right. And so at no point did I ever want to sue them. But if it came there, I think my lawyer was more than prepared to use that as more of like a bargaining chip type thing um, more than anything. Um, let's go to the golf for just a second as a segue. <laughs> 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 I knew you'd like that, Blake. You're welcome. Um, 
Did, is, is, uh, it seemed like there were, may, may have been almost a hangover at Colonial from all this. Are you, are you past it from a golf standpoint now where you feel like I can just play golf? I'm just, I've, I just feel fairly normal now. Well, I'm hoping to get there, but, you know, like I said, it's almost now more appropriate for people to ask me about it and make jokes about it and, and stuff like that. So in that sense, off the golf course, not quite. But on the golf course, you know, I, I showed up at Colonial ready to play. I didn't just show up to go whack the ball around. You know, I played and I wanted to compete and I wanted to win the tournament. And, you know, that's why I'm here this week. And so when it comes to on the golf course stuff, I'm always prepared to go out and play. I was prepared to go play in Louisville. Um, even after I got arrested, you know, I went out on Friday and had a good round of golf. And, you know, Saturday wasn't my best stuff, but came back again on Sunday. And so on the course, I'm always ready to play, no matter what, what the circumstances are off the course. If I'm showing up at a tournament, it's not some sort of ceremonial deal. You know, I'm here to, to play. In the front, we have Rob. Yes, yeah, Scott, I'm just curious. Um, the support you received through all this and the reaction from other players. You say guys are starting to kid about it now. Did they feel like they couldn't before and now you're getting it pretty good? Or just the general reaction? I assume you, you received some criticism or saw some, but was the majority of it favorable in your? I mean, the support I got from everybody that knows me was extremely in my favor. You know, I didn't receive any sort of negative comments from anybody that knows me personally. Um, the support I got from the fans was tremendous last week. The support I got from the players was also tremendous. Yeah, I mean, my friends will joke about it, but that's because they're my friends. You know, friends are supposed to joke about that kind of stuff. But, you know, those are the same guys that will also, you know, give me a hug and ask me if I'm all right. And so if all they did was make fun of me, it'd be a different story. But, you know, my friends are my friends and they love me and, you know, I love them back. And so... I'm more than happy to take a ribbing from, from people that love me. But as far as any sort of negative comments from anybody that knows me personally, yeah, that, that definitely was, was not, not the case. And fatherhood, kids can change things. There's been you know, many stories through the years. Have you contacted, uh, talked to guys about how to handle this, how to navigate uh, parenting and playing you know, that challenge? Yeah, right now I'm still trying to learn how to, you know, burp him and change his diaper and stuff like that. So um, as far as the true true parenting, you know, I'm trying to trying to just be the best support I can at home. But yeah, I, I have great resources out here and at home that we can we can go to for advice, and you know, I try to seek their advice as, as much as possible, especially when it comes to something that I have pretty much no idea what I'm I'm doing. <laughs> Bring the microphone back to Doug and then to Alex. How bad? Um, how bad did Grayson beat you? I think they beat us one up. Yeah, <laughs> they beat us one up. Him and Chesson beat us one up. Beat, beat me and Sam. Um, yeah, we had a putt on eighteen to tie, and you know Grayson. I think his fiance said he was running towards, running out the door to come play practice round, and he was skipping off the eighteenth green. <laughs> is how I would describe it. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, Scotty, a couple of things about about next week. A, does it does it feel like um, just given the schedule and 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 kind of the magnitude of this tournament that this this major this US Open has crept up on us pretty quick. Um I mean a little bit, yeah. I think um you know, I think the conversation typically the week before a major is like if we're playing what was the week before I feel like every year when we're leading up to the Masters, like the month before that is all we're talking about is the Masters. And sometimes I think the rest of the majors can kind of definitely sneak up on y'all in a sense. But I think as players I'm always preparing for the next week, and I'm trying to, you know, manage my practice to where I'm trying to get a little bit, little bit better each day. And I think the majors are always kind of earmarked in my head on the calendar. They're always, I try to block them out, but the the majors are always in the back of my head when it, whether we're playing, practicing, whatever we're doing. I think our brains always kind of know exactly where they are. What's your experience at Pinehurst? Um, I watched a flyover video yesterday. How'd it go? It's beautiful. <laughs> Just lastly, and I'll I'll hang up and listen here. But um, just given your your, your skill chipping, uh, when you've when you've encountered greens like like that at, that they have at Pinehurst Number Two, what is your kind of philosophy on when to putt and when to chip? Um, it's all just how it looks. You know, sometimes it depends on the lie. Um, typically, when you get to a major, most of the lies are, are pretty good. The golf courses are typically in great shape. Um, most of it will depend on how grainy it is, um, and so. Really, the first thing I always look at is the lie, and then kind of go from there. Alex, go ahead. Yeah, Scotty, on perspective, do you see things differently now? And maybe when you read someone's accused of something, you'll take a look, different look at it than you might have before. Um, you know, I think 
I, I try to believe in people are innocent until proven guilty. Um, and so when somebody's accused of something, I can't really remember some. I, I never really try to. I never really see someone, or I try not to see people for kind of their bad sides, you know. Um, just because somebody's accused of something doesn't mean that they actually did it, or maybe they did do it, and maybe they just made a mistake. I think forgiveness is something that's that's lost in our society, and you know, just because somebody made a mistake at one point in their life doesn't mean that they're a bad person. And I think sometimes in society people are expecting perfection out of everybody, and just because somebody will make one mistake, you know, people will you know crucify them for that, and you know. I've never really believed in that, you know, I believe in forgiveness, I believe in grace, and, you know, I try to give that out as much as possible because of how much grace, you know, I've been given. And the other thing, perspective as a world number one going into these majors now, every every year you're going to come in or every tournament you're going to come in, we're going to ask you questions because you're world number one. How does your perspective change from maybe three or four years ago when you just qualified to get into some of these events? Uh, I still feel like that same guy. You know, I still feel like the guy who, you know, was playing in the qualifiers to get in the U.S. Open. I don't feel any different. And so as far as going into the tournament, yeah, y'all may ask me different questions, but I'm preparing, you know, the exact same way that I did five years ago. Um, so on my end, not much changes. You know, maybe I'm getting a bit more rest just with all the other stuff that I have to deal with at a tournament now versus before. But I think that rest, um, you know, is more helpful in me, me performing. Switching over to the left, MK, and then we'll go over to Michael. Scotty, every year the uh, champion gets greeted by Mr. Nicholas with a handshake. I'm just curious, with everything that he's done for this game, what would having that moment be like for you if you want, if were to win it? Yeah, I mean, this is a special place for me. Um, you know, I remember when I was in college, I came here and played the, I would play the U.S. Open qualifier over at the other courses here. I can't remember what their name are right now, but... Um, yeah, we would always come over and, and watch the practice round and, you know, we'd stay an extra day and, and watch a little bit. And, you know, I always dreamed of coming here and playing in this tournament. And, um, you know, it's a dream come true just to be here in the field. And so, you know, I'm excited. It would, it would mean a lot to me to be able to shake his hand and, and win this golf tournament, you know, with all the, all the history here and what Mr. Nicholas has meant to the game. And, you know, like I said, it's just uh, it's an honor to be in the field this week. To the right with Michael. Uh, Scotty, you spoke eloquently this morning when and how did you find out you'd be asked to speak and and what did that mean to you um well i think first off you know when we found out grayson passed away last week it was obviously a pretty big shock to to all of us um it's been been a tough you know 10 days trying to process um you know what what transpired, you know, I think your mind always goes to, you know, I think we all wish we could have done, could have done more from him, done more for him, wish we could have done things differently. You know, your mind just kind of goes to, you know, what you could have done to prevent this from happening. But like I said, you know, Grayson, he was a, he was a sweet guy. He, he really was. He was, he was fun to be around. He, he worked hard on and off the golf course. You know, he, he, he got the most out of himself and it was, it was really fun getting to know him the last few months as he was trying to, you know, Marriage was around the corner for him. He had his fiance, and he was trying to get his fiance involved in life out here. And he was trying to really be the best version of himself, and you know, be a great husband. He was looking forward to to marriage. He was looking forward to one day becoming a dad. And um, you know, it 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 pains me that he's no longer with us. And um, you know, I just I tried to do do my best to honor him today. And uh, yeah, it's just it's been been a tough you know week and a half. We're going in the very back, and then we'll go back up to Bob and Dan, right here in the blue. I hate to follow that up with a golf question, but uh, <laughs> sorry, Scotty. At this tournament last year, it was kind of a microcosm of the the year for you. You were great everywhere ex except around the or on the greens. Um, does this week allow you to to look back and have some perspective on how far you've come on the greens, or are you just keeping your head down and continue to work at that? Um. Yeah, to be honest with you, I didn't did not really think about that much. Um, you know, I, we've had a good amount of stuff going on off the course. You know, that's something I also talked about this morning. You know, I think all of us carry a lot more stuff off the golf course with us than you know we let on. And you know, competing out here inside the ropes is is a great joy for all of us. But life outside the ropes can be challenging. And I think sometimes you know whether you have stuff personally going on or whatever it is, you know, last year, this time we had some stuff going on that I'm not, not, not going to get into, but, um, yeah, reflecting on where my putting was at this time last year, you know, I had two really bad weeks in a row between here and colonial where I hit the ball tremendously. And so it's really just, 
without the uh, without the drastic difference between my ball striking and putting, it would have just been you know a bad week. You know, I would have lost a few strokes on the greens the first two days, and I would have just missed the cut and gone home. You know, I'd been like, oh, you know, Scott had a tough week, but since I almost won the tournament, it became such a huge story about how poorly I putted. But for me. It was more about just sticking to my process and continuing to learn and grow. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade those weeks that I had back or the year I had last year just because I felt like I learned a lot about myself and, you know, what makes me tick. And I think it, it made me a better player today. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the, uh, you know, the challenges in this game, I think, can only toughen me up. And I feel like at this point in my career, I'm in a great headspace mentally. I'm, I'm excited about where my game's at. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go out and, and compete this week and for the rest of the season. Have time for just a few more. We'll go Bob and then back to Dan and Doug. Had, had you even ever had a parking ticket or a speeding ticket? I have had life? a couple speeding tickets. I my dad used to make fun of me because I had my dad's really good with words, and so if he he's, I've watched him get pulled over a couple times and not get a ticket, and I've been pulled over a couple times and I'm I'm batting a hundred percent on getting tickets. <laughs> <laughs> But so yeah, I've had a few speeding tickets, parking ticket maybe. You know, I can't remember the last time I was in a fight or anything like that. Like, it, you know, it's, it was. I think that's part of also kind of the recovery process from the whole scenario is your brain tries to figure out, you know, how this happened. And I still, I'll probably never figure out why or how this happened. But it's just one of those deals that, you know, it'll it'll always be kind of ingrained in my season this year. With, um, but you know, with time, people will forget. And a row back with Dan. You've, you've gained ground seven straight events putting. How gratifying has it been to see that work with Phil pay off? Yeah, you know, I try not to focus too much on the results, you know, especially with putting. I, a lot of it has to do with, you know, kind of our approach to things. And um, But, you know, with that being said, you know, seven weeks in a row, I, I didn't know that. But that's that's a great stat, you know, that it's nice to see kind of the uh, – the, the fruits of labor, the you know the work that I've put in, it's nice to see some results from that, and you know I've seen a few wins from that as well, and so, you know it's it's nice to sit back and reflect, and the results help confirm that we're doing the right things, and then you know at the end of the day just continue to put my head down and put in the work that we've we've been putting in, and um, you know treat it the way I've treated all aspects of my game through time, just trying to get a little bit better at a time and not make you know those huge changes, and I feel like with what I'm doing now with my putting, I'm trying to get more into my athleticism, more into feel and seeing versus being very technical. And, um, you know, obviously work on the technical side of my game and, and putting, but on the course, just trying to get, be athletic, be competitive, and go do what I'm naturally good at, and that's going out there and competing. And we'll take final one from when, that. Scotty, when you, when you talk about um, how much you learned and, and how you wouldn't trade it, um, or how much of that is – athleticism, how you work, technical, and how much of it was learning to, to block out noise and criticism. And did you ever have any noise in as a race to golf anyway uh, up until last year? Up until last year, probably not really. You know, I, I battled my swing when I was in college, you know, when I was battling kind of my body. Um, but as far as what I would learn from a technical perspective, not much. I mean, the technical stuff, like I said, I'm trying to get rid of as much as that as I can when I go out there and compete. And so I think mentally is where I learned the most. And that's when I you talk about it kind of toughening me up a little bit. Yeah, there was – I tried to do my best to block out the noise, but it's it was tough, you know, coming in here every week and having to be – answer questions about my putting. And it's like, listen, guys, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and um, when when you're not seeing the results, it can be tough. And so – I think I learned a lot about how I need to manage myself week to week, manage expectations and results. Um, and yeah, I felt like I, I felt like I learned a lot about myself and you know what I could do to compete better. Do you ever read much about yourself? I try not to. Can you tell what people are writing by the questions you get asked? Pretty much. I figured. I, I, yeah. Huh? No more questions. <laughs> That is all the questions we have. See so, y'all. Scotty, thank you for the time. <laughs>